Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Melodic Lemons here. And about two to three months ago, I bought Sonic Unleashed for my Wii for 14 bucks on Amazon since I didn't really have anything to play the HD version on. This is my first experience with the game and I'm very happy to share it with you all. So let's talk about Sonic Unleashed for the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> Sonic Unleashed starts off in space at Eggman's giant airship-like thing, and Sonic, being Sonic, ruins Eggman's three seconds of fun and crashes the ship. Eggman then uses the element of surprise to capture Sonic, resulting in him using the Chaos Emeralds to transform into his super form. Super Sonic then chases after Eggman to the end of the ship, which proceeds in him begging for mercy after all these years. Eggman's such a fucking pussy. Sonic then gets extremely cocky now that he has the higher ground, which results in Eggman abusing Sonic's state of vulnerability. In this process, Eggman reels Sonic into this electric reactor machine and sucks all of the life out of the Chaos Emeralds and reverting Sonic back to his base form. He then shatters the Earth to literal fucking pieces and Sonic turns into this freakish werewolf-like thing also known as the Werehog, which we'll get back to later. Eggman then opens the door, sending Sonic flying all the way back to Earth. When he gets there, he lands on a tiny little chihuahua, almost killing him. This little thing ends up losing all memory of who he was, and Sonic offers to help him get his memory back. Along the way, they get some ice cream from the man selling it in Windmill Isle, Sonic then decides that since this little thing is orgasming over ice cream, to call him Chip. So now, it's up to Sonic and Chip to save the day and bring the world back to its original state, defeating Eggman. Upon rescuing Sonic's best friend, Tails, they meet Professor Pickle, a scientist that helps Sonic and Chip get to the continents that they need to restore the power of the Chaos Emeralds. In order to do this, they have to go to the Gaia temples on each continent to bring everything back to its original state, including Sonic. Remember that Werehog thing I mentioned earlier? Well, Sonic Unleashed has two different gameplay styles. Back in 2005, Sega released a little game for the Nintendo DS called Sonic Rush, a game which established a new moveset which allowed Sonic to boost at high speeds with a click of a button. Sonic Unleashed was the first to bring this to 3D, completely eradicating moves such as a spin dash and replacing it with sliding and stomping. The HD versions of Unleashed allowed you to play it with a smooth, responsive controller, whereas the Wii version, you had to play with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. I mean, you could also play it with the GameCube and Wii Classic controller, but if you didn't own those, you were screwed. Moving back to Sonic in the daytime stages, I personally think he feels way better to control in the boost games than the adventure games, but the overabundance of motion controls in this version are a problem though. Fortunately for me, I was able to adapt quickly to these controls despite them being absurd. In order to do most things in this game, you have to shake the Wii Remote forward, and no, I'm not kidding. That's literally how you boost any homing attack. One thing I don't like about these stages is how hard movement can be at times, and how jank it can feel. For example, when you're boosting, Sonic becomes super hard to move in any other direction besides forward, and I guess it kinda helps that these are split into the tiny sections of the boost gauge, and the drift. The daytime stages level design is now a tad bit more automated than HD version. My guess is this is because of the limitations of the Wii. And now. This brings us to the other side of the game. Oh boy. Now, as I mentioned before, Sonic Unleashed is divided into two fundamental gameplay styles. The day stages that I just talked about and the night stages. Sonic Unleashed takes place in both a night and day setting. And the main gimmick of this game is that when the sun sets, so does Sonic. At night, Sonic morphs into this werewolf beast thing known as the Werehog. The Werehog is much larger than Sonic. He's now much fuzzier than he was before, and has these long, big, stretchy arms that kind of remind me of Rayman. The Werehog's gameplay is inspired by God of War, and plays like a beat-em-up platformer hybrid. In the Wii version, in order to fight 
you must shake the Wii Remote in various different ways. The nunchuck is for the Werehog's left arm, and the Wii Remote is for the Werehog's right arm. Shaking both of these at the same time can allow you to do a combo with the Werehog, bashing his arms into an enemy in front of him, which is a very time-consuming but strong attack. The Werehog's level design can range from genuinely fun to tedious tight platforming sections that make my hands hurt. It's usually a mix of both. When the Werehog gains a huge amount of energy in his unleashed gauge, press the C button and he can now use unleash mode, a short lasting mode where Sonic can do many strong enhanced attacks, along with enhance the speed to perform those attacks quickly. If you're not a fan of the slow and steady combat, then I highly suggest breaking anything you can to get energy and use it to fill out the gauge. During these Werehog stages, entering certain zones triggers the Werehog battle theme, which is a good tune, but gets pretty tiring as you hear it every single battle, similar to how Wind Waker did it. In fact, these stages remind me a lot of Wind Waker's dungeons. The battles in the Wii version are like these little tiny spaces where you can't leave unless you beat any enemy there. These can drag on quite a bit depending on the stats of the enemies. There's also mini boss battles that take place usually near the far end of the stage which add more padding to the Werehog, but they're fine. There are also bigger boss fights that occur in some stages, and I gotta say, these are way more creative than the daytime stages bosses, as they feel more original. For example, the Dark Moray, a boss in Cool Edge Night, where you have to do a series of events including breaking four laser chambers to get to the boss. Then in order to attack him without getting hit, you throw an ice bottle at him and then attack him in his frozen state. It's little creative things like this that make me like the Werehog a lot more than others do. However, most of my main problems with the Werehog all boil down to its platforming, where most of the bullshit occurs. I really don't like the Werehog's platforming in the Wii version. It feels a bit too motion control heavy and sometimes it's just flat out unresponsive. The Werehog is decent, at best. Alright, so now that we've gotten two of the core gameplay styles down and all, I think it's time to get into how Sonic Unleashed Wii is structured, and how different it is from the HD version. So as you may or may not know, this and the PS2 version were developed by Dimps who are responsible for the Advance and Rush games, and the Sonic 4 games too. This means a lot of things in this version were handled way differently than the HD version. First off is the hub worlds. Instead of the open world free spaces that the HD version had, this one had like point and clip backdrops where you could speak to various NPCs. After talking to these NPCs, it opens a Gaia temple to which you can get to the level with. Kinda underwhelming, but it gets the job done. However, where this version truly gets to shine are the Gaia temples. They really outdid themselves here. They're how you access levels and get items such as lives. They're also much more open and creative than the HD versions. Speaking of lives, unlike most Sonic games, you can't get them in any ordinary level, which is odd. You have to be in the Gaia temples. The daytime stages are split up into acts, with some of those acts being extremely short, mission-like stages which have you complete a certain objective. Meanwhile, in the nighttime stages, they're split up into usually five acts of full fleshed out stages, which can feel like huge padding. The ranking system makes its return from the adventure games, Heroes, and 06. Just as good as it was before. In the Wii version, in order to get a good ring, you must beat the stage in under a certain time limit, and doing so will grant you sun and moon medals, which is a much more convenient way to collect them instead of scavenging for them like you have to in the HD version. You can also unlock extras if you collect all three medals in each stage. After clearing a stage, a continent is restored to the Earth, and if all the continents are restored, then the Earth goes back to normal. One thing I noticed while playing this game is that the tornado missions from HD version are missing, and so are two whole stages, those being Empire City and Missouri, which in its place is a boss fight. Now that we've gotten all the important gameplay stuff out of the way, I think it's time to get back to the story. Also, fun fact, the cutscenes in this version are pre-rendered, so they look different compared to the HD version. Now, after Jungle Joyride, 
Chip realizes that he is in fact Light Gaia, the opposite of Dark Gaia. So it's up to Chip and Sonic to stop Dark Gaia from reaching his full potential. So Sonic and Chip decide to make their way to the final Gaia temple in which Eggman has built an amusement park by the name of Eggman Land. And this level is notorious for being extremely hard and long, while on the Wii version it's a slightly difficult joyride. Eggman Land Night is actually good in the Wii version, I had quite a bit of fun with it. After this stage comes my favorite cutscene accompanied by my favorite non-supersonic boss in the entire series, the Egg Dragoon. Although in this version he's not that hard to take down, in fact he's fairly easy. Unfortunately for Sonic and Chip, Dark Gaia reaches his full potential, draining Sonic's energy. But not to worry, combining the Gaia temples, Chip forms a body by the name of the Gaia Colossus and then uses it to go into a head-to-head -head fight with Dark Gaia. Similar to Punch-Out. Just like the Werehog stages, you can control Gaia Colossus left arm with a nunchuck and his right arm with a Wii Remote. After defeating Dark Gaia's first phase, Sonic awakens and begins phase 2, where he runs in the Gaia Colossus three times, doing quick time events to hit each of Dark Gaia's eyes. It's at this point that Dark Gaia shrouds the world in darkness, including Professor Pickle, Tails, and Amy Rose. It's up to Sonic and Chip to save the day now. Using the Chaos Emeralds, Sonic transforms into Super Sonic, and this leads into what I think is the most legendary Sonic boss of all time, Perfect Dark Gaia. At first, this boss is pretty difficult, but if you've played it enough times and understand the attack pattern, it becomes a huge cakewalk. The premise of this boss fight is to gain rings to fill your boost gauge, and when at least one of the spaces is full, you can attack Dark Gaia. During these sections where you can attack him, dodge any boulders that you can to get to his eye. I highly recommend that you secure a lot of rings to fill up the boost sections in the gauge, because they run out really easily. He claws at spots where he spawns lasers, so it's up to you to avoid those lasers. And there's another attack where he spawns a giant power ball. Avoid that by pressing A and launching it back at him. Once you attack six of his eyes, a seventh with his middle eye will open. Just attack that, and that's it for Dark Gaia. After this, Chip makes a sacrifice to help Sonic escape, and this is honestly one of the saddest cutscenes out of any Sonic game. As he throws Sonic back to the surface and remains behind, ending up dead with the only thing remaining being his necklace. When Sonic wakes up, he picks up the necklace and puts it on his arm. Tails then shortly shows up in the tornado, and Sonic runs along with him, thus ending Sonic Unleashed. Sonic Unleashed is one of the only Sonic games that really stuck with me, aside from, you know, colors. Its story and presentation is something I cannot forget. The soundtrack is literally amazing, and while it does have quite a bit of flaws here and there, I still appreciate this game, and with that, I give Sonic Unleashed a 9.5 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this video, I am so sorry it took such a long time for it to come out. This video went through development hell. I was planning on uploading it on October 31st, but couldn't do it to being busy. Then I was aiming for the game's birthday, but I never got to that either. But anyways, thank you all for watching this video, I really hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.